Hi, Hazel Kate Quinn here. It's a, uh, that's a video I'm watching of a, uh, it's an ambiance video of a beautiful room, with a Christmas tree and a blizzard outside, like these gorgeous what big wide windows with like snow falling outside and it's very relaxing. Hello, Radiana. Here's my little pretty girl coming to say hello. I love this pretty girl. My cats keep me safe. But, you know, I've been wanting to make a video for a while about this experience I had. Um, when I was catfished by somebody who pretended to be Johnny Depp. Not only did they pretend to be Johnny Depp, but they pretended to be Robert Redford too. And it was a mess. It was like a big quagmire of, of sex games, you know, polyamory, uh, psychological, tor all kinds of crazy mixed up, you know, all these complicated relationships and yeah, and I thought it was Johnny Depp. And this is way back in, get this, 2004, there wasn't any such thing as Twitter or Facebook then. There, you know, there was MSN Messenger. You could, or and AOL Instant Messenger and whatever other inst Instant Messengers came with email. And, and then there were message boards, forums, you know? And one of those message boards came on the johnnydepp.com website. This message board, I'm old enough to remember the old guest books. Now, I didn't get online until maybe 1999, maybe not even then, maybe just 2000. You know, everybody was talking about email and all that other stuff in 95, 4, 6 or whatever. And I, I said, no, it's not going to be me. I'm not going to go on the internet. You know, and anyway, I ended up doing that. But um, so I go, you know, I, I re <clears throat> 2004 was when I really fully just uh, became a, here comes Rose now, a full-blown Johnny Depp fanatic you know fan i mean i always loved him i loved his work i i you know he, he was beautiful but something about captain jack sparrow really just whoa i mean i went to this friend's house for a rehearsal for an opera company you know like a concert yeah you know, and we were rehearsing at this woman's house and she and this this was the first time that this particular woman hosted a rehearsal and what she did was she put on curse of the black pearl on dvd you know it was 2004 it was a year after the movie first came out in theaters so she had a dvd of uh, curse of the black pearl on but the sound was down i mean or the sound was kind of low you know because people needed to sing and everything you know and um so i'm watching him and it just Anyway, so I became obsessed and I, I want, I watched all his movies and I, and I, I wanted to go where I could talk about him to people, you know, I mean, my friend, you know, she and I kind of bonded over him, but then, but she's old, she was older and she's, you know, we weren't kids anymore. We weren't teenagers, you know, walking around with magazines of these gorgeous celebrity guys, you know, we had other things to do in our life, but for me, it sort of became a you know, I mean, I was just, there was something about him. I needed to find out more. And then, so I go to the, rosy girl is like just coughing, you know, but she'll be okay in a few minutes. But um, anyway, so I went on the johnnydepp.com website, read his biography, very fascinating. I mean, there's a lot of different places you can see his biography and maybe some people make up stuff, but anyway, so then I found the message board and the first thing I thought was, oh God, 
you know, because all I could see was like, oh, Johnny is so hot. He's such a hottie. Ah. Anybody can say that, but, you know, I wanted to talk about his work. I mean, because his work was, I mean, I mean, you can just see it in his body language. It's just powerful. I mean, his, the story he's telling, the, the, the role he's playing. When I first saw him, you know, in a role, it was as Eddie in Tom Petty's video, Great Wide Open. I mean, everything. I mean, he took me right in. He was, I was right with him. I was feeling every, oh my God, this guy was Eddie. And, and that last scene where he gets, you know, he's all burned out and he goes back to the tattoo shop and he sees this new kid getting his first tattoo and he's just standing there in the doorway like, and the tattoo artist looks at him and goes, ah, killer. Whoa. I mean, I mean, but yeah, I mean, I was just like, and I was, I was looking at him for ideas, you know, <laughs> and this is really funny too, because I mean, um, you know, I'm, I was a semi-professional opera singer, you know, I mean, you know, I would do gigs for no money and gigs for a little bit of money. I was never, you know, famous or anything like that, but like, uh, now Rosie's purring. I don't know if you can hear her. She's got a loud purr. That's why I call her Rumbling Rose sometimes. And I'll start singing to her. Did you say your name was Rumbling Rose? Rumble on, baby. Settle down easy. Rumble on, Rose. Anyway, hmm. wow, got a lot to unpack over here, but I'm telling you, so I went on the message board. I kept going back, you know, every now and then I'd be curious. And then, then I started seeing some more, some older people or, or some more, you know, um, more eloquent people who want to say more than oh he's so hot you know they were talking about his movies you know like once upon a time in mexico and you know this other stuff and there was this woman in particular you know that was you know talking about so i started talking and you know me and the woman became sort of friendly and then there was this jd jd and people, and he was writing stuff and I was reading it and it said, it, why the hell did I fall for it? But it literally, it, it could have come from one of his interviews. I mean, I mean, he, there was, there was humility, there was shyness. There wasn't this attitude like, I love all my fans. He never talked about his fans. Johnny Depp doesn't do that. He talks about them being relatives, employers. Anyway. He had his personality. He, he was so humble. He was humble. He, he, he was like, oh, yeah, you know, this is what you do. And, and it's what I do. And, and just talking to people like they're humans and just being friendly. And so I got into the conversation and started talking to him a little bit. But he didn't really notice me, right? <laughs> it's like everybody, you know, it, it was like a meet and greet online. Anyway. So he made an announcement at one point, I, you know, that he's not going to come around anymore. He just wanted to check things out, make sure everything was okay and meet people. So then he left for a little while. And then I started seeing, you know, I got to know this woman. I'll just call her Sarah for now. I don't want to use her real name because, you know, I don't know if she would want, you know, want her story splattered online. But anyway, I'll call her Sarah. Um, Sarah and I got to talking and then she, you know, she would say things to me like, oh, you know, that guy, you know, and she would say things on the, the board. Is that you? You know, like there would be this person that posted as Charlie, you know, from Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, you know, like just these little hints, like characters, Man Ray, 
the restaurant Johnny owned. I mean, you know, there's, and then they would reveal themselves to be Johnny Depp. You know, all these little aliases. Like he would be hiding. Like he wouldn't say JD or like announce, hi, I'm Johnny Depp. He would just kind of keep us guessing and then we'd kind of figure it out and then he'd kind of uh, acknowledge it. And then eventually, you know, I started conversing with him more and more and more. And then he, you know, it was like me, Sarah, and this young girl who I will call Beth, you know, and to protect her anonymity. Beth was about 13 or 14 years old. So it was the three of us, me, Sarah, and Beth and Johnny Depp on this goddamn message board. We would have these really fun conversations, play around and so, and then Beth would leave, you know, she'd have uh, homework or something. And then me, you know, me, Sarah and Johnny would be conversing. And then, you know, Sarah would leave. And then Johnny and I at one point started flirting, you know, and and sort of playing around, flirting with each other. And, and then people got offended and, you know, and whatever. And, but then we ended up taking it to email. And that's when it all started. That's when Johnny, Johnny, the guy I thought uh, was Johnny Depp. I mean, I'll never forget when I first saw the name Johnny Depp on my email, you know, like sending me a message, an email, Johnny Depp. The email he used at the time, I believe I still remember it. JD42 or JDEP42 at hotmail.com. It was all hotmail. It was all hotmail. Anyway, so we start, we were talking and talking, and then he introduced me to Lisa Helena. Lisa, lovely Lisa, was the story I was given. Johnny Depp's other woman. He had, I, he had this, you know, he was with Vanessa in 2004. The kids were little, but I meet him online and he introduces me to this other woman in his life, Lisa. And the story went that she was, they, they met when they were both 10 years old. Um, Lisa had horrible sexual abuse by her parents, her adoptive parents. She was, she was adopted. And Johnny, the story went, tried to save her and take her away from that house and take her home to his house. We all know now that would be out of the frying pan into the fire. But back then, nobody knew what Betty Sue had ever done. I mean, everybody thought she was this wonderful human being. And, you know, I mean, hey. She still is mom, and, and I'm sure she did a lot of things right, you know, as well as all that, you know. It's so, it's so layered with parents and abuse, it's, but it's, yeah, it's good to be clear, too. But anyway, yes. Yeah, so the story was that Johnny would go to Lisa's house to try to get her out of there, and her father and mother would descend on him, too, and rape him, too. And we are talking serious, horrific sexual abuse. The details that were described to me could have come from Amber Heard's testimony. But anyway, so I was taken into this so-called open relationship. I had discussed it with my husband, by the way. You know, before I even went there with this uh, guy online, I spoke to my husband, we opened our marriage. They introduced him to Lisa. They consented to let him speak with her and see what happened. So we were having this whole relationship thing. But then it got all messed up, you know. And this is why polyamory, I no longer, you know, for me, it just doesn't work. I mean, you got, you know, I, I respect it. You guys can have it. But this is what really bothered me about this guy that pretended to be Johnny. I feel like he made Johnny look so chauvinistic. I mean, we all know, we hear, I mean, Amber made such a fuss over calling him jealous, 
because of James Franco and Billy Bob Thornton and all her female friends, particularly that woman in Hicksville that was touching her. But I don't consider that jealous. I consider that, you know, being, being upset by any attentions from outside people, any flirtations with Amber on, on Johnny's end, I consider Johnny as being Papa Wolf defending his turf. You know, jealousy is wanting something you don't have a right to. Johnny had a right to his marriage with Amber. That was a covenant. You know, he, had, he that was an agreement. That was something he was protecting. He wasn't jealous. <laughs> they got a twisted view of jealousy. They make it into this negative thing. Anyway, didn't mean to digress too much. But, um, <clears throat> but a man who does not want his wife or his girlfriend seeing other men or even being that close and, you know, and being protective as he is, He's not going to go bopping around with other women. He's not going to have a second woman. I mean, Vanessa in 2004, I mean, those kids were tiny and they had a very, you know, he was, all he talked about with those kids were those kids, you know, and, and Vanessa. And that's what he was focused on. And he was so busy back then. Why did I fall for this? Because I was lonely because I was confused, because I was, you know, out to lunch. Well, no, I wasn't out to lunch, but you know what I mean? I, the, my marriage was at that time kind of stagnant. We, we were kind of like lost, you know, we were kind of like in a little lull, you know? So I felt, I don't know, I guess maybe I was, you know, stirred up by something new and exciting. I don't know. But I got really caught up in it. I got really emotionally caught up in it. My husband did too. And we were both, we were like worried about Lisa all the time. I mean, it became about helping Lisa with her problems. You know, I mean, there was all this focus on trying to get her out of this like PTSD hell she was in. She was always having nightmares about her parents, always having horrible yeah, and acting out in ways, you know, unhealthy ways, like going and meeting men on BDSM sites and meeting all kinds of strange men, behaving, you know, and messing with relationships, you know? Like, Robert Redford, Johnny, you know, the story went that Johnny introduced Lisa to Robert Redford because Lisa kind of liked him. I had a crush on him. And Johnny was like, oh, please. Okay, fine. I'll introduce you to him. And they felt, and Lisa and Robert Redford fell in love. So then Johnny was all upset, you know, and he's trying to be Papa Wolf protecting what he had with Lisa, which is this really deep connection. He's with Vanessa. And the story was, God, him and Lisa could never be together as primary partners with nobody else because the issues, that the, the horrific abuse that they suffered, you know, they could never be fully uh, together as a couple. Be I don't know why, you know, but whatever. I mean, that was a story they gave me. So Lisa always had to be the other woman. Not the main woman, but the other woman. <clears throat> but she was made to be more important than Vanessa. And Vanessa was just so sweet about it. By the way, I never even talked to Vanessa until the end when she, you know, she wasn't Vanessa. But, you know, all I kept being told is Vanessa doesn't like the internet, but she's cool about everything. You know, it just was such a head fuck. It was a gaslight. Who does this kind of thing? You know, and, and I would discuss it with this Johnny person. Like, what's the deal? You can't, you know, like he was jealous of my husband. And he was, I say jealous because that was, that's my marriage. You know, I have a right to it. 
he doesn't. But, you know, so, I mean, I didn't have a right to be jealous of Vanessa, and I never was. That was Vanessa. Lisa? I'm like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, okay. That's a sacred thing that, you know, they already had, you know, but it was such a twisted existence. And then the argument started, and then everybody got upset because somebody was relegated down and somebody was cast out and somebody, you know, like they would dangle Lisa in front of my husband, like a carrot and then snatch her away because, Oh, Lisa's going through a rough time. We can't do that right now. We can't include your husband. Sorry, Kate. We can't include him right now. So what do you think that did to him? He got pissed off and guess who got the brunt of that? Me. In a way, I can't blame him. I mean, here I am opening up this whole thing. And I get lucky with not only Johnny Depp, but eventually Robert Redford and Lisa. And what did my husband get? Nothing. Got a bunch of carrots dangled in front of him. So, yeah, that was pretty fucked up. That was tough. You know, it, it took a while to heal from that shit. But anyway, so. How did I end up with Robert Redford? I don't want to get ahead of myself. <clears throat> Lisa was doing this really funky therapy where, um, and Johnny and Robert were involved in it. And Johnny was also getting that funky therapy done on him and, because they both, you know, Lisa and Johnny had this horrific experience together. So they had to heal from it. So all these therapists were coming around. So this really crazy therapy consisted of actually doing something emotionally wounding to somebody like something that would really lisa asked me to have net sex with robert redford because of course that's a really deep cut to her and she asked me to do it because if i did that if she got really hurt and traumatized by like hurt by that she would suddenly remember something that she's not remembering that it's there's this uh repressed memory and she wanted to remember it so she asked me to do this horrible thing to her to so that she can remember it what the fuck are these people doing and what am i doing so yeah and the, of course the first thing i did was i went to talk to johnny let me remind you guys, this is neither Johnny Depp nor Robert Redford. These are not the real celebrities. These people did not do this to me. Johnny Depp, Robert Redford, never met them. I don't know who they are. However, you know, back then I thought, you know, God, I was so lost. I, they, I thought that Robert Redford and Johnny Depp were fighting over this Lisa person. And then fighting over me because what happened was I did, you know, after I, I spoke to the John, the Johnny person and he actually said, okay, why don't you go and have net sex with them and see what happens? Just, you know, be careful, you know, and like not to fall in love with them. Or, and I'm like, okay, whatever. So we did. And, and of course, Robert charmed the socks off of me. He was very sweet and very different than Johnny, very kind of distinguished you know, like a wise old gentleman, you know, who had lived a little while. I think Robert Redford at that time might have been in like 70 or maybe late 60s. I don't know. But <clears throat> Johnny back then was 42, I guess, you know, and Lisa was the same age as him. But anywho, and I was like 37, 38. But regardless, Robert, yeah, so we, we developed a relationship and then it got, it got crazy. And so then him and Johnny were battling it out. So long and short, this is getting this is getting silly. You don't need to know all these details. But what I needed to put out there was that these catfish people can really fuck with our heads. And the internet can really fuck with our heads. For this reason, it is really hard for me to go online. It's hard. I mean, when Johnny won, I was all there with him. I was right there. But I couldn't go online because it was just Amber Heard, her bullshit, all of it, you know, her, te her icky testimony, the horrible way that she pretended to cry and, and 
her horrible portrayal of an actual victim, which she never was, just brought it all back to me. And I, I shut down and it just, and I fell in love with Johnny Depp on a level that was obsessive, very, and jealous. I will say it. I'm, I'm jealous of his new girlfriend. I'm jealous of any, anything that, you know, and, and I'm, my husband and I are doing great, but it's like, I have this stuff that I have to get out of my soul, you know, cause this is, this is what else happened. 2006 is when I finally broke off with those people. Christmas, 2006, my husband and I fixed it up our marriage best we could. Then we came into a lot of money because his mom died, left it to him, bought this house with most of it. And then we lived like a king and queen for about four years. <clears throat> and, you know, I, I formed an opera company, nonprofit. I, I put on, I wrote operas. We put them on, we per, I paid people nice money you know, and we did these, these operas every year, maybe two, one or two a year. So, and then the last year, like 2013, <laughs> we met this pretty, uh, nasty character who was, I don't know, I don't know long story short she was in the chorus for this opera i was doing and she lived far away and i mean she you know we were going to pay her travel expenses to take the train to philadelphia and back <clears throat> but we ended up inviting her to move in with us for you know to you know since it was in philadelphia and and she lived elsewhere and you know, it would be easier rather than us having to pay her additional expenses. If she could just have free room and board, that was the biggest, that was one of the dumbest things I ever did. You don't invite another woman to live with you and your husband that, oh God. And that is a symptom of what, you know, the trauma shit that I experienced at the hands of this Lisa Helena. It might have just been all her, one woman, pretending to be Johnny Depp, Robert Redford, and herself. Just this lonely woman, maybe she's, I don't know, maybe she's got, maybe she's on welfare somewhere and she's just lonely. Maybe that stuff really did happen to her and she just needed to channel it, you know, by pretending these two celebrity men are taking care of her. Okay, I get it. I can even forgive it, you know, but it's just something that I can never forget. Didn't mean to digress again, but <clears throat> yeah, I mean, so back to this woman, I will call this woman that lived with me and my husband in 2013, Amy, Amy, <clears throat> Amy had an amazing voice. She studied with, uh, somebody, a relative of somebody famous who retired you know, and beautiful voice, but you know, I mean, all the leads were cast, so she sang in the chorus, but then we, we, we got to talking and everything like that. And she, but she was very, very, you know, charming, very, she came across very sweet, very friendly, very, you know, a good listener, very, you know, communicative, very clear. And then, you know, I like it when people are very forthright and I know where I stand with them. And I felt like Amy was a pretty on the level person when we were, you know, first meeting and, and hanging out. So we asked her to live with us. And when, she, you know, it was probably just going to be a temporary arrangement. You know, we were, we were just looking like something, you know, while she was doing this opera. But then we had talked about like longer, we're not, we weren't sure, but see, she got, she kind of got into us, you know, this is what narcissists do, you know, they, she love bombed us 
We invited her into our house, and then this is what happened. My husband drove to where she lived, helped pack all her stuff, and bring it here. And the day after, you know, she had unpacked and moved in, all of a sudden she suddenly just picks this fight with me. All of a sudden this sweet, charming girl that I've begun to call my sister, just out of nowhere, just accused me of saying something rude to her. And I didn't say that or even mean that, you know, she took something I said and twisted it to mean something. And I said, no, that is not what I meant. And she's like, well, it, it certainly is what you said. And I'm like, oh, I did not mean to say that. I'm sorry. So that was, you know, and she would do that a lot. She would say, oh, you said, that. you know, I'm like, no, I didn't mean to say that. I'm sorry. You know, gaslighting, like belittling, bullying, gaslighting, picking on. And she wanted our money too, because our, you know, our little measly $45,000 that we had left from my husband's inheritance, we were stu stupid enough to tell her about that. And then she said, okay, well, I, let's blend all our money together and I'll manage it. You will link our bank accounts and I'll just manage the money. So she wanted to, <laughs> that was a red flag. And, and, and the first thing I said, when she said, let's link our bank accounts was a resounding no, no. I said, no, Amy, we are not linking our bank accounts. We will give you money as you need and we'll just kind of share, but no, we're not. And she's like, oh, oh, okay. And it was shortly after I said no to that, that she started gaslighting me and belittling and bullying me. So it's sort of like no coincidence, you know? And then she's flirting with my husband. She's being sweet as pie to him. And even trying to get him, you know, to play him against me, like gang up on me with him on side. You know, I mean, one time she took off at me because, you know, I was looking around for my electric cigarette. I could not find it. Normally when people are not around and I can't find my electric cigarette, I would scream and carry on and have anxiety because that's what happens. I have anxiety and sometimes it happens. But when Amy was there, you know, and that was the last thing I wanted to do. So I'm keeping it inside. I'm using my inside voice to go, oh my God, where's the cigarette? And Amy is trying to talk to me about something. I'm saying, and, and she's like, what's wrong with you? What are you doing? What are you looking for? And I'm like, oh. and, you know, I guess I just sort of uh, shut down. I mean, I, I didn't want to flip out. So I'm just, give me a minute, you know, and then she went over to my husband and then she came back to me and said, John just told me you're looking for your cigarette. Is that what you're doing? And I said, yeah, I found it. And she said, well, John and I are getting very frustrated how preoccupied you are with those electric cigarettes. You know, basically, you know, like I get all the lectures in the world about vaping, la da 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 and people were all in my face about the electric cigarettes. But, you know, and so she has to go on this long lecture. John and I are getting very, fr like, it's like, what? John and I, John and I, I mean, Amy, and, you know, it's like Amy, the only John and I is John and me, but I didn't say that. I was just, what the hell is she doing? I mean, it was, she was, I was literally like, oh, people can just get so into your head. So, but anyway, that brought all that crap about Lisa back, you know, and, and Johnny and all that stuff back because here was Amy a close friend, like, like a very close woman friend who was incredibly close to my husband and basically bullying me and, and trying to make me feel less than, which is precisely what Lisa Helena did. You know, I mean, she would be all sweet about it, but it would, it would always be about this hierarchy. Come on, putting Kate in her place, but Kate in this situation was married to my husband. Amy was not married to him, but she acted like she had this special friendship with him and I come second. So I guess that's why, you know. So anyway, here's what happened. Here's how it ended. 
I finally got sick and tired of it and told Amy, you know, gently, I, I managed to keep it amicable without too much drama, but I, I, I ex extracted Amy from this house. You know, fortunately, she got a gig somewhere in Jersey singing in an opera chorus to something. And somebody was giving her a place to stay over in Jersey. So she had a place to go. So it was during that production that I spoke with her and said, please, let's, let's go our separate ways because I, you know, I think we tried it, but I don't think it works. And so she was for, okay, okay. You know, I mean, you know, so long and short, we got her out. But my husband at that time was mad at me for what's her name? Uh, Amy could sing a lead role in the next opera. We didn't really hand, we didn't really even handshake it. You know, we talked about it. She's like, oh, okay, I'll see what I'm doing because she did not even like Philadelphia. She was, she felt like, I guess she kind of treated singing in this opera for us as doing a big favor because she hated Philadelphia. She actually said to my husband, do not mention that you are from Philadelphia. Do not do that, you know? And um, because Philadelphia is supposed to, whatever. This woman is a nut. So anyway, so my husband, you know, this was a deep cut because years ago he had a company that he had founded and this company was ripped out from under him by the woman he, he originally started working with who eventually, she was the artistic director and she would take, she would give people solos and give people roles and then just randomly take it away from them for whatever reason. And so my husband compared me to this woman because I took the role away from Amy. I mean, gen I mean, we never really actually shook on it, but I basically, you know, so it wasn't really like a business. I mean, if I had signed a contract with her, and then just took the role away. Yeah, that that would be unprofessional, but it was not like that. It was, it was not even a handshake. We talked about it, but he, he went, you know, he got confused, my husband. I think Amy was all about this, you know, be a big opera star. She wanted to be a big opera star. And she was telling my husband he could be a big opera star still. And she she advised him to like dye his hair, dark and take the gray out, make sure his teeth are white, you know, use crest whitening strips. You know, it really hurt. I mean, deep cuts, I mean, stuff that's personal to us. You know, this is what narcissists friggin' do. So it, it, I'm just realizing as I'm talking about it, this woman, Amy, you know, basically enacted what I went through with those people that pretended to be Johnny Depp and Robert Redford. Where am I going? I started talking about catfish, but I ended up talking about narcissists because it's all the same thing because they all, you know, this is the channel for, you know, getting well from narcissistic abuse, getting over, getting peace from it, thriving, not just surviving. So, um, yeah, just putting that out there, this woman. So, 2014 rolls along. My husband and I just couldn't sort it out. We could not get past it. So we separated in 2014, me and my husband. September, we did our last opera, went our separate ways. He moved in with his father and I kept the house here. Anyway, then I went into this kind of la la land where I re embraced the Johnny Depp. Miss, you know, Lisa Helena idea that I may have met him. I started telling people I had met the Johnny Depp. And then I got involved with twin flames and was told Johnny Depp was my twin flame. Yeah, because I, I put it out there. Could he possibly be my twin flame? And they said, oh, yeah. Twin flame readers were telling me he was my twin flame. I mean, I don't know. I mean... You never know, but honestly, it just, I got so caught up in that mess that 
you know, I just was lost. And then 2016, you know, I was feeling lost and lonely. And, and, but I still feel, felt like I needed to reach out to my husband and try to fix, you know, figure stuff out. So we ended up getting back together and um, he stayed with me for a while. And then, of course, that was when Amber, that whole thing exploded. So there I was all caught up in, the, you know, Amber heard accusing Johnny of violence, you know, and being focused on that whole thing, going to Jamber News all the time, living on Twitter and Jamber News and everything all day, every day, you know, not even, you know, paying too much attention to my husband. So I didn't blame him when he, you know, we eventually, you know, he saw somebody else and we eventually split up again. I moved out, tried to live on my own, moved back in in 2017, moved out again, tried to get, you know, with another guy and have a whole new relationship. That didn't work. I could never get Johnny Depp out of my mind and this whole twin flame mystique. And it lasted and lasted and lasted until um, 20, 2019, my husband and I finally got back together. And then 2020 or 2021, I finally told myself that was not Johnny Depp. That could not have been Johnny Depp in 2004. I never talked to Johnny Depp online. I have to say this out loud to you guys so that I can believe it myself. These, these catfish, these narcissists, they can twist so many things. And, and when you spend so many years, like I spent how, however many years it was with Johnny and Amber defending Johnny and just seeing the way Amber talked to him. And I mean, oh God, I mean, it just, <sighs> anyway, I think I want to stop for there. But um, I may come back later, but I did want to unpack that to start with. I may do a couple more videos about this kind of thing, but it, it's not, um, I am doing better as things go. Um, it's been a strange trip, but I feel better now that I've unpacked that. I'm trying to get my life in order. I started taking SEPTA again. I started doing the dishes and feeding the cats and trying to do stuff around the house, trying to get my life back together, you know, and it's, it's better than it used to be, but I want to thank you guys for listening and take good care. I will be back. Love and blessings.